Have you ever wished you could speak fluently about your favorite topics in your new target language with confidence? Well, I'm here to guide you through that journey. But just to make it clear, I'm not here to tell you that you can speak fluently in any situation and any language in 90 days. Learning languages always takes time because you need lots and lots of input to succeed. I will discuss how you can quickly learn to speak fluently about select topics in select situations, even in the early stages of learning. Yes, I'm saying even as a beginner in a foreign language, you can carry on fluent conversations, skyrocketing your confidence and fueling your motivation to learn your target language. And I believe this approach can be very helpful for any language lover. Now let's define fluency in the context I'm using here, because there is no agreed upon definition, even among linguists. Fluency is not a complete mastery of all the vocabulary in the language. If that were the case, nobody would be fluent in their mother tongue, let alone an additional language. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, about 171,146 words are in current use in English. However, the average educated English speaker will know somewhere between 20 and 30,000 words, or about 15,000 lemmas. In linguistics, lemmas are the base or root forms of words from which other words are derived. For example, the word go can appear in different forms such as goes, going, went, gone. In this case, the word go is the lemma. Depending on the situations you are in, the complexity of the conversations you have, knowing just 1,000 to 3,000 lemmas in English is sufficient to carry on everyday conversations. Next, fluency is not a complete mastery of all idioms in the language. An idiom is a group of words established by usage as having a meaning not deducible from the individual words. For example, over the moon is an idiom that means extremely happy or delighted. But just knowing the words over, the, and moon is not enough to know that. I have met some people who say you're not fluent until you understand all the idioms in your target language. Again, with that criteria, it is possible that no one is fluent in any language. So what is fluency? Well, let's dig into the root of the word. Fluency comes from the Latin word fluentum, meaning to flow. So in my mind, fluent speech is a very simple concept. Your words flow out of your mouth like a smooth conversation with a friend. That's fluency. Now, in the case of native speakers, some people may suffer from speech impediments or due to some other reason, their speech doesn't flow. But they still may be proficient or competent in the language. So, language proficiency does not always equal fluency. Furthermore, nobody, even native speakers, can speak fluently about all topics. For example, can you, or any of your friends for that matter, speak fluently about string theory or quantum physics? <laughs> Maybe not. Thus, fluency is domain or topic specific for everyone. However, someone's speech may flow, but is it grammatically and lexically impoverished, poor? Filler words are words such as mm, ah, mm, like, and you know. Filler words are also known as vocal disfluencies. Um, Even native speakers may not um, always yeah, speak I mean, fluently uh, if they use a lot of these filler event. words. We can also consider two other aspects of fluency, correctness and coherency. Regarding correctness, you would probably agree with me there is no one correct way to speak a language or a dialect. But the point is, do you speak like the people in your reference group, the people in the community you want to join? And coherency, it refers to the quality of being logically and intelligibly connected. 
So I would summarize the meaning of fluency as follows. Language fluency is a seamless and contextually appropriate expression of ideas, characterized by natural flow, correctness according to language standards, and coherent organization of thoughts. Yes, that means that some native speakers don't speak fluently most of the time, and some non-native speakers can speak more fluently than some native speakers about certain topics. So what is the quickest way to become fluent in our target languages? Choose the domains and topics you are most likely to speak about and concentrate on those first. For a beginner, that probably means you want to know how to introduce yourself and ask relevant questions about the person with whom you are speaking. Let's say you're learning Spanish. Let's try something cool with ChatGPT to craft our own personalized introduction in Spanish. Okay, let's see. What are we going to say to ChatGPT? I'm trying to learn Spanish, so please create a monologue in Spanish that I can use to introduce myself and get to know other people. Uh, after making a statement about myself, please give me the appropriate question to ask the other person. Please teach me a lot of vocabulary. So step one, we tell ChatGPT what we want to know, in this case, self-introduction. I made up some data, including the fictitious person's name, profession, nationality, family, hobbies, and favorite cuisine. You just customize your data and what you want to share about yourself when meeting new people in your target language. And within a few seconds, we can check what ChatGPT gave us. Step two, now we can put that in Google Translate, Depot, etc., to understand exactly what ChatGPT provided in our target language. The good thing about Google Translate is that it can provide us with a fairly good word-to-word -word translation. The result isn't always 100% correct, but most of the time it is sufficient for us to understand what we have translated. And it's getting better every day. Okay, let's see what we have here. Aunque soy estadounidense, nací en París cuando mi papá trabajaba allí, así que siempre he tenido una conexión especial con la ciudad. And do you notice? Sometimes ChatGPT can offer some interesting suggestions, such as, así que siempre he tenido una conexión especial con la ciudad. So I've always had a special connection to the city. For this step, you can practice listening and checking the pronunciation by clicking on the speaker icon on Google Translate. Text to voice is available in most languages it translates. Next, I asked ChatGPT to give me a question to ask for each statement I made, and here it is. So now let's put that in Google Translate too. Okay, let's see what we have here. Me llamo John Smith. ¿Y tú? ¿Cómo te llamas? My name is John Smith. And what's your name? Soy programador de software y desarrollo aplicaciones para teléfonos móviles. ¿En qué área trabajas tú? I'm a software programmer and I develop applications for mobile phones. What area do you work in? And so on. So let's say that you know enough about Spanish to recognize this is the familiar or informal form of speaking to someone. So just ask ChatGPT to give you the formal form. I did, and this is what I got. Now we see instead of tú, usted is used, which is the formal pronoun in Spanish. Okay, what is the next step? We want to achieve correct pronunciation and fluent speech flow. This is a very important step, especially for self-taught people. It is best if we can get our language material, our narrative, checked and recorded by native speakers. There are two ways that I often use to find help for doing that. One is language exchange partners. Currently, I do language exchanges for Cantonese and Vietnamese, and I find them very helpful.
But if it's difficult for you to find a language exchange partner, or you don't have time to exchange languages, and you just want to focus on your studies, I recommend you try italki, a platform I often go to if I want to find a tutor. The cost per hour is very affordable, with the lowest being around $5 per hour, depending on the language. Normally, I would choose a tutor who speaks with the accent that I prefer in that target language and ask the tutor to record the materials so that I can use them for self-practice afterwards. italki is a really good platform for learning languages. If you're interested, there's a link in the description box. Just click it and you'll get $10 in italki credits when you make your first purchase. Okay, next is a very important step. Repetition and practice. Repetition is key to memorization. Practice saying this monologue or dialogue repeatedly until you can say it without looking at the text. You can record yourself and compare it to the audio of the native speaker that you got before. Focus on mastering small sections before moving on to the whole passage. Some people like to use flashcards, and if you do too, then create those flashcards with the target language phrase on one side and the translation or explanation on the other. It is best to use phrases in order to memorize the words in context. Review those flashcards regularly to reinforce your memory. Next, listen and imitate. Listen to speakers talking about similar topics or in similar situations on YouTube or podcasts. Pay attention to the rhythm, intonation, and choice of words. Try to imitate their speech patterns to develop a more natural flow in your own delivery, including their gestures, expressions, and even emotions. As I mentioned before, in a series on how to achieve a native-like accent, being able to imitate native speakers can help your delivery in that language be more effective. Next, regularly seek feedback from native speakers or language instructors. Constructive feedback is invaluable for refining your pronunciation and ensuring a more natural delivery. Remember that consistency is crucial when learning a new language. Regular focused practice and using these techniques will help you not only memorize the text, but also speak with a more authentic, natural rhythm and intonation. Now we get to progressing to the intermediate and advanced stages. As you progress, celebrate your victories by adding more exciting topics to your practice routines. The choice of topics usually comes naturally and is based on your interests or how you presently use or plan to use the language. It is also important to develop your cross-cultural communication competence. Domain-specific fluency also requires cultural competence related to the subject matter. This includes an understanding of the cultural context, conventions, and nuances specific to that domain. For more information about developing your cross-cultural communication competence, please take a look at this video. Now that you've got to hear in this video, I hope you understand that fluency in your target language is not an elusive goal that takes years to reach. It is a journey you can embark on today, right now, and I hope these seven steps can help you speed up your learning process. And if you're interested in how to improve your listening comprehension skills, you can check out this video where I mention which method I found to be most effective for my listening skills and to enhance my vocabulary. See you in the next video.